serve. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Things First. Jenna Wolf, Nick Wright. Good to have Brandon Marshall back with us. Kevin Wilds is here this Our morning. Guy. What's up, Nick? <laughs> yeah. No, I was saying, look who's back. We are. Uh, see. Look who's back. I know. Back. I, it's great. I know. I we missed you, I missed buddy. You guys. We missed you. We. All so we waited, obviously, the NFL is with us, and now we got some real NBA to talk about. We got you here. It starts off with a great morning, so let's go with no the Baker? big game last no night. No Baker? The game we've all been wording for. Oh, you, you believe it? We're not shows. starting with you Baker. You weren't here for those. <laughs> not on NBA opening night. L.A. versus L.A. It's confusing. We call it Lakers and Clippers. Lakers got their rings, but that was the only highlight in this one. 33 points from Paul George for the Clippers. 26 of his points came in the second half to help the Clippers hold off a Lakers comeback. How about this? Clippers beating up on the defending champs right out of the gate. 116-109, the man of the night, Paul George, after the win. Yeah, I mean, I just played basketball. Um, simple as that. I just played basketball. I applied the work that I put in this offseason. It's not going to be pretty every night. Tonight I got it going. And... Um, was able to show a big and big time for my team. This game one, um, it's the first test for us. We've literally been together for nine days um, as a full group. Uh, we got some returning guys, but we got a lot of new pieces that's going to play a big role in our in our in our, in our, um, in our success this year. So uh, we look forward to watching the film tomorrow and get better from tonight. All right, Brandon, when you look at last night's game, was this more about the Clippers <laughs> or the Lakers? Yeah, Nick. Nick, so look, when you look at the off-the-court festivities, it was all about the Lakers, rightfully so. Uh, and watching the, you know, the celebration, I just thought about those sacrifices that those athletes had to make to get to that point. It was a beautiful thing. I don't know if I was the only one, but listening to the families introduce and, and, and crown their kings last night was pretty powerful because as a professional athlete, a former professional athlete, all I thought about was those moments of just, you know, when I eating chicken breast and broccoli when I didn't want to. And I know, Jenna, you probably love that and you're going to get on me later about it, but <laughs> you don't really like to eat that for six, seven months in a row. You don't want to, you know, when the family's going on vacation and they're having a good time and having a Slurpee and you got to have, you know, your, make sure you get your gallon of water in. I thought about those moments and I was like, wow, that is awesome. But Nick, when the, when, mm -hmm. the, when the smoke cleared and the lights turned mm -hmm. on, it was all about those Clippers. I don't know if you saw it last uh -huh. night. Did you watch that game? It was all about oh, the yeah. Clippers. This was the Clippers that we, that we were talking about last year and what we wanted to see. Paul George rips for yeah. 33. You yeah. got Mr. Consistent Kawhi go for 26. You had Serge Ibaka. Yeah come in and play lights out. You had Lemon Pepper <laughs> Lou even come in and look explosive. Yeah. And guess what? You had Pat Beverly yeah. making threes. This NBA yeah. season is going to get real interesting, Nick. It was all yeah. about those Clippers when that when those lights turned on. I I actually agree with you, Brandon. It was all about the Clippers. And the last time on this show we led the show with the Clippers, it was with me cackling at their demise. So let me give them a sincere and earnest congratulations because it had been 362 long, hard days since they had last beaten the Lakers last Christmas. And more importantly, it had been 106 days since they went up 3-1 on the Nuggets. So it had been 106 days between wins for these Los Angeles Clippers, so I'm happy for them. They got that monkey off their back. Now, unfortunately for the Clippers, what I saw last night not only does not make me more confident in their ability to be better than last year, it makes me less confident. They beat the Lakers, I'm happy for them. The Lakers obviously weren't ready to play in the first quarter, they're down 22 points and that was the story of the game. Lakers clawed back into it, tied it a couple times, never took the lead and the, the first quarter ended that basketball game for all intents and purposes. The problem for the Clippers is this, Wilds. Did you see who they're playing? Not who they're against, who they are giving rotation minutes to. In the starting lineup, was Nick Batum? Now, I understand Marcus Morris isn't okay. there, but Nick Batum, they, Nick Batum, who, if people aren't familiar, pick up. played for the Hornets. 
Oh, okay. Well, so, yeah. The Hornets, the Hornets had a lot of Nick Batum experience, and their reaction to that was Gordon Hayward. We would like to give you 120 million dollars to play for us, and Nick Batum. We would like to give you 27 million dollars to play for anybody else. See you later. I saw Luke Kennard prominently featured. 16 million per year, newly minted Luke Kennard. He's a significant member of their rotation. You mentioned Pat Beverly. Pat Beverly is the same Pat Beverly he was back when I covered him in Houston, which is not a starting point guard in this league. So yeah, when Paul George scores 33, Clippers gonna look decent, pretty good. I thought Ibaka was fine, but I, as a guy that has been short selling or shorting the Clippers for two years now, I am, I, I'm trying to further my position. If anyone is long on the Clippers, and it sounds like Brandon is, I will front you those stocks because nothing about last night made me think the Clippers season is going to be any more mm, successful mm, this mm. year than it was last year, Wilds. Yeah, no. I agree with Nick, Brandon. I, I don't think the Lakers were worried at all. And I'm going to show you some clips that were like LeBron was not in like zero dark 30 mode. He was in the scarier mode of like, yeah. No big deal. This is all taken care of. Here he gets his shot block, and Pat Beverly gets into his face, and look at LeBron's reaction. Okay, sure. Well, that's fine. We came back from a 22-point lead. We can get buckets anytime we want. Then in the midst of the game, this is the fourth quarter, in the midst of another comeback, oh, look at LeBron locked in here, Nick. He's just totally focused. Like, nah, I'll talk to the bench. And then just to drive it further home, he rolls his ankle, Nick. He's And it's like, oh, okay, he ties his shoes a little bit tighter. Plays a few possessions, like, all right, uh, why don't I just come out for the rest of the game? Uh, it's fine. I'll see you on Christmas. Then he tells Rachel Nichols, like, oh, you know, Rachel's like, oh, what do you think about your ankle? He's like, yeah, I'll just drink some wine and it'll go down the left side of my body. I'll be fine. <laughs> so the idea th that, like, the it's Clippers, put, like, beat up on the champions, it's kind of like when my son beats up on me, like, oh, 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 you got me and I'm down. He's like, wow, what a big win for Russell. I'm like, eh. I don't know. I was pretty relaxed during the whole fight. I probably could have, you know, I really had the size advantage. So for me, Brandon, <laughs> I, I did not think this was a wildly impressive win because I felt like the Lakers were more of a feel-out game. It honestly felt like a seeding game to me in the bubble. Yeah, I like your take, but if it, anybody who watched that game last night, what they saw was they saw a team. And that was the biggest question mark going into this year with the Clippers. I don't care about what happened last year. It's about what have you done for me lately. And what they did That's last fair. night, they answered the question. They looked like a team. They were rallying to the floor to help each other up. They saw they, they looked energetic. They play, they passed the ball. Their rotation was amazing. The, that was yeah. a team last night, and they looked phenomenal. To the a team field. whose rotation prominently features Patrick Patterson, Nick Batum, Luke Kennard, one-way player <laughs> Lou Williams, and one-way player Patrick so Beverly. Why, did you, and did I the Lakers, understand six well, go ahead. Yeah, please. Brandon, yes. Did the Lakers go, did the Lakers go, even go, go. did they have the lead at all? Did they the Lakers have the lead at no. all last night? So you're talking no. about who they had. They never did. Okay, so with all those guys you named, no. why didn't they beat them? Why didn't they beat them? Is yeah, because, because what Wilds just they said? Were playing, because they, because they, were, they were feeling out the roster because LeBron didn't play the most of the fourth quarter. And you're right. Listen, it was a good win for the Clippers, and I'm happy for them. It, they, they led wire to wire, which means the last game the Lakers led in was when they won the championship. So it'll be have to be there that's going to be the last what? time they led and the what last time and the Where Clippers have now me lately, have, have had a fourth quarter lead for the first time since they went up 3-1 on Denver. What have so you I'm done happy for me all lately, parties baby. involved. The I'm happy show, for all the parties involved. Back, you know. I'm happy. Good for them. All right, well maybe the last